Hey, wonder hussy here. Apologies. I'm all bundled up, but it's friggin' freezing. I'm out in the high desert uh, in Apple Valley, California with my sister, headed out to one of my favorite hot springs to go soaking for the day. This is an awesome hot spring for a winter soak because it's right on the uh, banks of a creek. So you can go for a really ice cold plunge in the creek and they get in the nice hot spring afterwards and do a rotation and oh my gosh it's just about my favorite thing to do at a hot spring but unfortunately we've run into a little problem now these hot springs are located along this creek at the base of the mountains where lake arrowhead is I'm sorry i don't know the name of the mountains but to get to the hot springs well there's a few different routes you can take you can hike in from the Los Angeles side, but it's really steep. Or you can drive into this private ranch on the um, desert side, on the Apple Valley side, the Bowen Ranch, and you can pay them to park on their property and hike in from there. Or that is to say, that's how things used to be. Uh, I haven't been here for a couple of years now, and boy, things have changed. You know, it's always been a real bumpy road. You drive up uh, out of Apple Valley, you drive to Bowen Ranch, and then you pass through like a little guard gate. There's like a little house where a guy lives, and you pay him five bucks for day use, five bucks per person, and then you drive down this real bumpy dirt road, all the way down, you, oh gosh, yonder. There was a parking area, and you used to be able to camp overnight too, if you wanted, up at the parking area. But that's all changed now. There's this truck blocking the road. So you can't even get to the old parking area anymore. So basically I feel like I've been gypped. It says no vehicles beyond this point and there's kind of like a little turn out there where you can park, which is a pretty decent hike away from the old parking area. And the old parking area was already like, I think a two mile, two plus mile hike down to the hot spring. So. If you have to park here and hike from here, it adds even more time onto the hike. And what's more, you can't even just hike along the road because it's all fenced off. Okay, there's a few different signs hanging from this fence. Keep out, no trespassing, no off-road, DCHS campground property. Okay, and then down here, this sign says, respect where you are visiting, do not jump or cut through fence. Follow this fence line when you see a three foot wire fence running along DCHS campground property line, stay out of fence property and go south, blah, 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 blah. This property is not Bowen Ranch, park and camp here next time, $10 a person, closer access to the hot spring and new facilities, bathroom, showers, and a store coming soon, deepcreekhotspringscampground.com. I'm not really sure what's going on. There's one more sign, look at this. This one says, do not jump our fence. If you paid to park at Bowen Ranch, stay on Bowen Ranch's property and go around our fence. Respect our property and business. We are not part of Bowen Ranch. Pay us next time if you want to park closer and walk through. Boy, that really chops my hide. So basically what they're saying is, I just paid $5 for me and $5 for my sister to park at Bowen Ranch, thinking that it was going to be the way it always was. But apparently if I want to park there, I have to park here and follow this entire friggin' fence, which it goes quite a ways into the distance and go all the way around it and then resume the hike down to the hot springs, which like I said, is already like two miles. Or alternately, I can forfeit the $10 I just spent to park at Bowen Ranch and go to this Deep Creek Hot Spring place and pay $10 per person more. So now I'll be paying $30 all together just to go to this friggin' natural hot spring. I mean, to be fair, I think I can probably understand why this happened. This is a friggin' amazingly beautiful hot spring. One of the best I've ever been to. But unfortunately, it got pretty trashed over the years, uh, mostly from people, well, people leaving garbage down there. And also, unfortunately, people pooping all over the place. So this Bowen Ranch guy had a pretty sweet deal going on because his property provided the easiest access to the spring. So he was able to get away with charging five bucks for day use, 10 bucks for overnight camping. And he didn't provide any toilets or anything. There was nothing in the parking area or the campground. So I don't know, it probably got pretty gross. So now I'm at a position where I got to figure out what do I want to do. I drove all the way out here. Do I want to park here and just hike the extra distance? Or do I want to go back and pay 20 more dollars to check out this Deep Creek Hot Springs campground, which admittedly 
it sounds like a good idea. They're probably gonna make a lot of money and it's overdue if they're building, like the sign says, showers and restrooms. But it's just a bummer, man. The good old days of just cruising down here, paying your five bucks and soaking for the day are long gone. Okay, I talked to my sister and we decided that since we already spent the money, we might as well just hike the extra distance around this fence, which can't be that far. And we really want to get to these hot springs, especially because it's such a friggin' cold winter's day. And to get to the hot springs, you have to go across a creek, deep creek. And in the winter, that creek is cold and it goes up pretty high. Uh, as I recall, I mean, depending on snow melt, I guess, I think it went up to, it came up to like my mid thigh. So wading across a freezing creek <laughs> is a real adventure, but it makes getting to the hot water all the more rewarding. And also this little trip is giving me a chance to finally try out these awesome new spy cameras I got. They're called Opkicks and they're these little tiny cameras that are made to stick on various accessories. So like I have one that'll, it'll fit into a ring on your hand, one that goes on a necklace, one that goes on like a stylus, like a pen. And then this one here is made to go on these sunglasses. I guess they're like magnetic sunglasses and the camera just sticks right on the side like a magnet. So I can do a POV video. You'll see exactly what I'm seeing. All right, well, we followed this friggin' fence line a half a mile and never came to any gate or anywhere where you could get through it. And then the fence line turned away from the hot spring. And I was like, how much farther out of our way do we want to hike to get to these dang hot springs? There used to be a, this thing called the Freedom Trail, which was like a really rough, dirt road that cut across BLM land that you could supposedly take if you didn't want to pay the Bowen Ranch price. I never did that before because I figured, you know, five bucks wasn't too much to pay. But now it seems like it might be our only choice. Okay, wow. <laughs> we backed up, went back out the Bowen Ranch and uh, took the turn to the Freedom Trail, which come to find out is also the turn to this new Deep Creek Hot Springs campground. And we saw the turn off to the campground to the left, but I didn't, like I said, want to spend another $20. So we just kept going because the road kept going straight. And I figured that's what they call the Freedom Trail. And well, pff, yes, it's, it's rough and you would definitely want a high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle to get over it. But... I don't know, it hasn't rained recently. If it rained recently, it would probably be really bad. It wasn't that bad. So anyways, we drove all the way to the end of the Freedom Trail. Uh, there's kind of like a little map of all the off-road trails in the area, and then there's like a flat area on top of this bluff that you can park. And we're gonna leave our cars here and hike down to the springs now. I'm a little hesitant because these two guys rolled up in a truck right as we got here. There's some local ranch guys. They seemed very friendly and they assured us that nothing would happen to our cars if we parked them here. I heard in the past that if you park your car here, uh, people have gotten broken into. So I don't know if that's just uh, malicious gossip being spread by the guy who runs Bowen Ranch because he wanted you to park on his ranch and, you know, pay him. Well, I guess I'm going to take a chance and leave my car parked here. Gosh, we've come this far. We might as well continue. Okay, there's my sister's car. And then in the distance, I'm gonna zoom in just next to my sister's car there on the right. That's that sign I was talking about that shows all the different off-road trails in the area. So that's how you know you've gotten to the Freedom Trail parking lot. And then I parked up a little bit ahead of her here. And there's the trail. You can see there's like a red signpost in the ground. Well, that marks the end of the off-road route. No motorized vehicles beyond that point. That's where the hiking trail begins. Right here is the split where off to the right there, that's the trail to Bowen Ranch. And then off to the left, following this rusty old barbed wire fence, that's the freedom trail. So when we get back to this junction, we're gonna have to remember to take a left. And that barbed wire is no joke, unfortunately. 
I caught my dang jacket on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it sucks because this is an expensive jacket. You know what I mean? Arcteryx? Whew. It was a gift from a friend. And now the dang barbed wire put a hole in it. Damn you, Freedom Trail. Well, you know what they say. Freedom isn't free. Okay, we've arrived here at the beach and this is what we're facing. An icy cold creek crossing. Uh, I don't know. I'm really bad with distances. It looks like it's about maybe 30, 40 feet. So not super far, but this water is gonna be cold, I guarantee. Okay, Whew, got my pants off. I'm gonna leave my boots here on the other side so they're waiting for me nice and dry when I get back. Now it's time to wade across this freezing cold creek. Oh my gosh, yikers, it is cold. Ooh, we gotta get through this as quickly as possible and get to those hot springs. Water is nice and clear there, look at that. It's invigorating. Oh my gosh, I can feel my feet going numb. This is not good. Ah, ah, ah almost there, almost there. Ah! Ooh. It actually physically hurts. My feet hurt, they're so cold. Oh my gosh, I gotta get to those hot, hot springs. I know I'm probably, I sound like a baby, but oh my gosh, that creek is no joke. <laughs> okay, made it across the creek, and now the first order of business is I need to make some hot cocoa. All right, got my cocoa. And now, well, now for the kind of sketchy part. I didn't feel like packing a backpacking stove down here since I'm just going for the day. So I don't wanna to have to like boil water, heat it up myself. I'm just gonna use the natural hot water coming out of this pipe. A lot of regulars who come to this hot spring swear that you won't get sick if you drink the water that comes out of this copper pipe because it's coming directly out of the rock. So it's not like there's any pee or poop contaminating it, right? Right? I know it probably seems kind of foolhardy, especially after, well, I just made a video a month ago where my friend Jessica got Giardia from drinking untreated water in a cabin in Death Valley. <laughs> but I've actually drunk this water many times before. I've never gotten sick before. I'm gonna go ahead and take my chances. But as an extra fail safe against germs, I'm gonna go ahead and add a packet of hot sauce to the cocoa. Kind of gives it that peppery kick, like almost like Mayan hot chocolate. I've done this before, so if you're going, ooh, gross, hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. One pack ought to be plenty. <sighs> Pretty good. To be honest, that water's not quite hot enough. Uh, it could stand to be a little hotter, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Okay, now that I've made my cocoa, continue on hiking to the hot spring and get in the hot water. Okay, so all the hot springs are basically over there on the other side of this rock face from where the pipe was. So I gotta hike, scramble, crawl along. And remember, I'm barefoot because I left my boots on the other side of the creek. <laughs> but the nice thing about hiking along here is there's hot water or warm water flowing all along the way. So your feet never get too cold. I don't know if you can even see, but there's steam coming off of this creek that I have to cross. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's nice. Oh, that's hot. That feels amazing. Ah. Okay, coming up to the first pool. But this one here is not very warm, so I'm not going to stop here. But I will give you a little peek of how beautiful it is. Look at that. It's like glass. And unfortunately, not to gross you out, but here's an example of exactly why these hot springs are getting harder and harder to visit because of disgusting stuff like this. I think that's a Kotex. Blech. Like, come on, people. What the hell is wrong with you? It's not that hard to pack your friggin' trash out. You know what I mean? Like, a Kotex doesn't even weigh anything. I feel an obligation to actually pick that up as gross as it is and pack it out with me on my way out. <sighs> anyway, now we're up past the first pool, heading up along this beautiful little trail. Oh yeah, you can see my sis is naked in that pool way in the distance and there's two dudes in there with her. So unfortunately I won't be able to shoot any footage. Oh look, there's another pool here and nobody's in this one. I mean, look how beautiful and clear this water is. This waterfall coming down, filling the pool. Steam wafting off the top. 
gentle winter sunlight hitting it. And then you have this beautiful wintry view. Ah. Oh. Oh, wow. This feels incredible. Oh my God, this is worth all the hassle of getting down here. I swear. Man, for all of those of you who've never been to a hot spring and don't understand what the big deal is about hot springs, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, here it is, God, 35 degrees outside, whatever it is, and this water is Oh, stupid me, I forgot my thermometer up in the car, but I'm gonna guess this water is like 104. It's really nice. And there's no chemicals in it, no chlorine, no bromine, just uh, hot water coming out of the earth. Uh, from what I hear, these particular hot springs are rich in lithium. So you may find that your mood is improved after soaking here. Oh my God, look how beautiful the sun is on these rocks right now. This friggin' steam wafting off the water. This is absolute paradise. Can't think of anything better to do on a cold winter's day. <sighs> okay, I moved over to the uh, Arizona pool. And well, to be honest, I've been sitting in here for probably at least a couple hours just Enjoying the sun, enjoying the hot water, talking, met some interesting people. Uh, but we figured we should probably leave here actually at 4 p.m. because it gets dark so friggin' early this time of year. And we're in a ravine, so it's gonna get dark even quicker. And also we're not super confident about the route because we took that new trail. So we probably have at least another hour to soak and relax. So I'm just gonna take full advantage of that. But since I'm over here at this pool, this Arizona pool, which is right up against the beach there, you can probably see the beach behind me right up against the creek as well. So this pool is actually ideal for doing hot, cold plunges. I've actually already done a couple of them. Uh, I got in the cold <laughs> creek up to my neck and I tried to do the <laughs> Wim Hof Iceman breathing. <sighs> Try to stay under at least 30 seconds. And then, oh gosh, you just feel so alive. You're whole skin is tingling and then you get back in the hot pool and it, oh god it's it's an amazing feeling and it's a nice thing to do in the winter because you know a lot of viruses going around I heard about this coronavirus we want to build up your immune system to resist that stuff and supposedly doing this hot cold stuff strengthens your immune system okay I'm gonna climb out of this nice hot hot pool and get in this freezing cold creek Woo! Woo! I'm off, I'm off. Mind over matter. Feel all that tingling. Feel all my antibodies building up. Immune system thriving. I feel alive. Ah! Okay, I can't take anymore. It's time to get back on. Ah. Oh my gosh, so much better in this hot pool. <laughs> That was invigorating. Well, unfortunately, it's after 4 p.m. and we figured we better start hiking out now. So I had to drag myself out of the hot spring, dry off with my bathrobe, and now I'm gonna get dressed. Well, at least my top half, so that I can wade back across that freezing creek. Now coming here is one story, because you know there's hot springs waiting for you on the other side. Leaving is another story. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so clear though. That's how I'll get through this cold. I'll just concentrate on the beauty. A clear, fresh, clean snow melt from Big Bear. Have you ever been skiing up in Big Bear? Well, that's where this water originated, up on the mountains behind me. Woo! Wim Hof, Wim Hof. Think about Wim Hof. Ah. Oh my gosh, I'm so cold. Ah! Woo! 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 <laughs> Now let me go see if my boots are still here. Yay, oh my gosh. My fake hugs never looked so cozy. Ugh. All right. Well, we still have like an hour and a half of daylight. We should be fine. But I'm gonna get going, get to my car and turn on the friggin' heater. All right, uh, 
I just realized I forgot to pick up that soggy Kotex <laughs> that I said I was going to. So in exchange, I picked up this water bottle that somebody dropped. I'm not sure if that's as good as like soggy Kotex, but hey, it all adds up. And then we were talking to another old timer at the Springs who's been coming for decades. And I guess according to him, the reason for all this confusion with the Bowen Ranch is, well, I guess technically the staging area, the camping area for the old Bowen Ranch campground didn't actually belong <laughs> to Bowen. They were just using it. And now some big land developer came in and bought it up, bought a bunch of land out here and that's why they're building the campground. So mm, sucks for old man Bowen, but good for the campground people. And actually good for me because now that I know about this freedom trail, I don't know if I'll ever pay to park here again. You know, if this whole thing hadn't happened with the developer and the Bowen Ranch thing being closed, well, I probably would have been too lazy to ever try this and I would have just kept on paying five, 10 bucks. So gosh, think of all the money I'll be saving myself in the long run. <laughs> Whew. This is relentless uphill, but it's been just under an hour and I can see where we parked. It doesn't look like the windshields are broken. Yay! Man, what an adventure today was. You know, here I was going to a hot spring, a place that I've been a bunch of times, a place that I already made videos about. So I kind of thought, well, oh, this is gonna be boring. Hmm? But I learned a lesson. Nothing is ever boring, especially not out here in the desert. Oh my gosh, and speaking of desert, I gotta stop a minute and do a pano and show you guys how friggin' beautiful it is here right now. You can see the snow up there on the mountains. That's where Big Bear is, I think, or Lake Arrowhead. And there's a trail we just came up. And there's the sun going down behind those beautiful high desert hills. And there she is. My trusty steed with nary a window broken. <laughs> All right, now for the best part of the whole hike. <laughs> Turning on my heater. Whew, okay, well, just a few words in closing. A, Deep Creek is still alive and well, so never fear. Just don't do what I did and don't pay to park at Bowen Ranch anymore. Either pay to park at the Deep Creek Hot Spring Campground or take the Freedom Trail. Anyway, I'm out. Catch you next Wednesday.